In this chapter on miscellaneous TLS topics, we have reached the mini-series of five lessons covering various attacks on TLS. The attacks we will have a look at as part of this mini-series of five lessons are Lockjam from 2015, Locky 13 from 2013, Sweet 32 from 2016, Crime from 2013, and Heartbleed from 2014. Even though these attacks are interesting subjects to be studied in and by themselves, the major takeaway from these attacks is going to be a set of security recommendations on TLS cipher suites, which will be presented for both TLS 1.2 and TLS 1.3 in the lesson following this mini-series. The first attack on TLS that we in this mini-series of five lessons have a look at is the Lockjam attack from 2015. Lockjam from 2015 is a man-in-the-middle attack on TLS versions 1.2 and lower and exploits the protocol flaw that within TLS versions 1.2 and lower and in case of an ephemeral Diffie-Hellman key exchange, the signature created by the server does not include any indication of the specific cipher suite chosen by the server. This flaw can be exploited by a man-in-the-middle attacker to downgrade an initially secure TLS connection to a connection that uses export-grade cryptography such as an ephemeral Diffie-Hellman key exchange across a weak 512-bit prime group. Looking at the runtime of the general number field thief, which is one of the currently fastest integer factorization algorithms, a 512-bit prime group provides roughly 63 bits of security. 63 bits of security is nowadays well within reach of, for example, also just larger companies, as, for example, demonstrated by Google in 2017, when Google broke the collision property of SHA-1 in just about to the power of 63 evaluations of SHA-1. Nowadays, prime groups of size at least 2048 bits are recommended, which are assumed to provide just around 112 bits of security, which is the security estimated by again looking at the runtime of the general number field thief when factoring a 2048-bit integer composite. Lockjam can now be prevented by disabling all ephemeral Diffie-Hellman key exchanges across prime groups of size less than 2048 bits. Lockjam can, of course, also be prevented by simply just transitioning to ephemeral elliptic curve-based Diffie-Hellman key exchanges, for which traditional expert-grade cryptography does not exist. The third option to prevent lockjam is by transitioning from TLS 1.2 to TLS 1.3, as within TLS 1.3, the signature created by the server is across the entire TLS 1.3 handshake that was received by the server, and as such also includes an indication of which specific cipher suite was chosen by the server. Having presented the essentials of Lockjam and the measures that can be taken to prevent Lockjam, let's now have a look at how Lockjam is really pulled off. All starts with a well-intended client that wants to start a TLS connection with a server and for this sends a client hello message to the server asking for an ephemeral Diffie-Hellman key exchange across a secure group of a sufficient size. The man in the middle, in between the client and the server, then intercepts this client hello message and changes this client hello message to now not ask for an ephemeral Diffie-Hellman key exchange across a secure group of a sufficient size, but to now ask for an ephemeral Diffie-Hellman key exchange across an insecure weak 512-bit prime group. The server receiving this client hello message then accepts this ask to conduct an ephemeral Diffie-Hellman key exchange across this insecure, weak 512-bit prime group and accordingly sends a server hello message indicating this choice. The man in the middle then intercepts this server hello message and modifies it again such that the server hello message receiving the client looks like the server accepted 
the ephemeral Diffie Hellman key exchange across the secure group that the client was initially asking for. The server, as its second message, then sends its certificate together with a signature calculated across its Diffie Hellman half keys, but crucially not across its selected cipher suite. This certificate and signature, the man in the middle simply forwards to the client and with the client no way of telling that the half key received is actually a half key across a weak prime group. The client then sends a half key of its own, which is then again intercepted by the man in the middle. As the server half key is a half key across a weak prime group, the man in the middle can calculate the discrete logarithm of the server half key and from this discrete logarithm and the half key received by the client, the man in the middle can then calculate the same master secret that also the client calculates for this session. Having calculated the same master secret as the client, the man in the middle can then decrypt all the encrypted application data sent by the client. This is LockJam, a beautiful man in the middle attack exploiting a protocol flaw of TLS version 1.2 and lower.